this video is to demonstrate how to do the experiment T4, which is the enthalpy of mixing of sulfuric acid and water. Now, this experiment is actually probably the most dangerous in the entire thermochemistry lab, so you do need to be careful, so there will be specific safety instructions. The reason for that is we're using concentrated sulfuric acid, which we've got in this container here. One of these beakers has sulfuric acid, the other one has water, and they look pretty much identical. However, 18 molar sulfuric acid is going to eat straight through paper towels in less than five seconds and do pretty much the same to you, your skin, so you do need to have the appropriate kind of protection uh, available for you. Um, if you look at the floor, the splotches of damage on the floor tiles came from this experiment over the course of the last 40 years. So um, I really don't want that happening to you, so please do be quite careful as we go through this particular experiment. You will be performing calorimetry, that is measuring temperatures, measuring heat as it moves in and out. To do this, you'll be using a calorimeter, and that's oops, mostly this Teflon cup, which is obviously very chemically resistant. Inside, you can hear rattling around. We've got a, a magnetic stir bar. This sits inside. This is just a temperature jacket on top of a stir. So if we turn this on, the magnetic stir bar will spin. The lid for the calorimeter, there's a, a funnel to be adding the second uh, chemical. You start off with one chemical and then you add the second through the funnel. And there's also a hole. The hole is for the thermocouple. Now this is a Teflon coated thermocouple. It will detect temperature and it's plugged into a computer. And we'll show you how that works in a minute. This is the reaction, the sulfuric acid water hydration, that has us concerned about do you add acid to water or water to acid. The mnemonic that I use is, may her rest be long and placid, she added water to the acid. This other one did as she ought her, she added acid to the water. The, um, we've set it up that you will be adding acid to water. The reason for this is if you add a small amount of water to acid, because this is so um, exothermic, that water will boil and spray concentrated sulfuric acid and steam everywhere it uh, lands. You really don't want that. So this is for adding conch sulfuric to water, but we try and avoid that. So you'll be pumping acid into the water, which will be in the calorimeter. Let's look now at the computer itself. We need to move a guy. We have here a laptop. Your TA will give you this. You need to plug it in, and there's a serial mouse attached to some of them, and sometimes it's got a touchpad to, to work on. But it, um, they're somewhat senior, but they do continue to work. The unusual thing that is not typical is this, which is a connection for a thermocouple. This part itself is called a GoLink, a patented name. And somewhere here we are. We have a USB port connector, which plugs in right here. And these machines are old enough. There's only one USB port on it. This connects to this box, which is labeled thermocouple. Make sure you get one that says thermocouple. There are other ones that are designed for other things. And on this is a plug. And the thermocouple in the fume hood has a plug that will fit into it. A uh, good idea to mix up, match up the positive and negative signs, I hope. There we go. And the instrument is now smart enough to recognize that I have plugged in a thermocouple as opposed to something else. On the screen, you want to find a Logger Pro 3. And when this fires up, it will present us with um, an axis of time. It will monitor time versus temperature. And it will also give us a series of data points. 
once you tell it to start, it will start monitoring. At the moment, you see it's monitoring temperature at about 17 or 18 degrees, and if I hold the thermocouple probe in my hand, it starts moving up. It's good to know that I'm warmer than room temperature, so this is actually functioning and is ready to start receiving data. Um, it usually works best for this experiment if you have two people. One, pers one person is designated as the computer uh, person, and the other person deals with the acid. Um, if you can't decide who does which, rock, paper, scissors works really quite well to make that decision. Let's move back to the thermocouple now, at, excuse me, the calorimeter, and we'll talk about how to get things working. And the first thing we need to do with the calorimeter is to calibrate it, and you do that just by mixing hot and cold water. This is to determine the heat capacity of the calorimeter, that is, how many joules it takes to heat the calorimeter from one temperature to a slightly higher temperature. You put the cold water in first. This I've got is cold water, and the capacity of the calorimeter is 75 mils. So the total of the liquids that you put in, both for the calibration and for the acid water runs, is uh, 75 mils. So what I'll do is mix 40 mils of cold water. This is just tap water out of the tap. It doesn't need to be chilled particularly. And, okay, that's about 38 mils and just pour that into the calorimeter. And I will now need 35 mils. Now this I heated on a hot plate, which you'll find around the lab. So get yourself some reasonably high temperature water. And Okay, we're ready to go. To start off with, we'll measure the temperature of the hot water. Now, it will start measuring when you get it going. So what you need to do here is just click Start, and it will start taking temperature at every few seconds. Place the thermocouple probe inside five seconds, and it will start scrolling across and telling you what the temperature is. Once that's done, you've got that for five seconds, put the thermocouple into the cold water and let it sit there for another five seconds so that you're sure what the temperature is. Have the stirrer on and just pour in the hot water. Make sure you've got it all out and let it sit here monitoring for the appropriate amount of time, which will be about 35 seconds, so that you've got a decent, stable temperature. Now, at this point, this crawl doesn't look terribly interesting because it goes all the way up to 1,000 degrees. So if you could stop that, please, and then auto scale. Where's the auto scale? And there we have it. So this is the hot temperature. This is the temperature of the cold water. And this is the temperature of the mix. So what you will do, actually, is plot this part. And it's you notice the, the heating didn't get to be uniform until about here. This is completely normal. It takes a while for things to mix in. You plot this temperature across. This temperature down here is the cold water temperature. The temperature up here is that of the hot water. Um, I should have left in to be a little longer than this, so that you get a plateau here, so you get a better measurement. Now, at this point, you should collect this data just by highlighting and copying it to the clipboard. and there will be a spreadsheet on the, this uh, laptop. So if you um, fire up Excel or whatever the spreadsheet is on here, just drop this data into an Excel spreadsheet and preserve that. And at the end of the day, you can export all of your spreadsheets onto a USB key, and there is your data. 
you can also print, oh, there we have Excel firing up. And the data is now in an Excel spreadsheet, which you can export. You can also print this, send it to a printer, which is over on the other side of the room, so that you've got a better idea of your, what this looks like as a temperature plot. It's now time to start doing this with sulfuric acid rather than hot and cold water. So to do this, we need to um, get Andrew dressed up in slightly more protection than he presently has. In the, under the centrifuge hood, we've got protective equipment, and this is, there is stuff available here. We have an apron, we have sleeves, we have masks. And let's get Andrew dressed in this equipment now. Well, we have an apron, which um, goes over the head and also t needs to tie behind, preferably not taking your ears off at the same time. We then have sleeves, and these come in two kinds. We have brown ones and we have silver ones. They're identical. And these go on the arms from the elbow down to your wrist. Make sure that your lab coat sleeve actually comes out the bottom. And it, as you can see, it really does help if there's two people. And a full face shield. So, and make sure that the shield actually does cover the face. Um, but you adjust at the side so that it's not moving too easily, otherwise it'll slide down and whomp you in the nose and not be too helpful. And then the most vulnerable part of you is actually your hands. While the purple gloves are useful for most things, these ones are slightly heavier. And we've got the uh, heavy green gloves in uh, multiple sizes, so make sure that you get the ones that fit you. Also make sure that the outside, the cuff of the glove goes outside the plastic sleeve so that you don't have anything running off the glove and inside your lab coat. So Andrew is now ready to do battle with sulfuric acid. We're now ready to <clears throat> mix some sulfuric acid and water. To get a new run, click on new document, if I can find my cursor here. Uh, and you probably don't want to save it once you've printed it. And I'm ready to go. And when you're ready to actually start monitoring, you just click on the green button. Let's look now at what's happening in the fume hood. The total volume of material inside the calorimeter should be 75 mils. So I've emptied out the water and dried the calorimeter, and there's still the stir bar in there. We're going to be mixing in this particular run 65 mils of cold water, room temperature water, and 10 mils of sulfuric acid. So if you'd put in the 65 mils, which you've measured grad cylinder, just pour that in there. And make sure the, the stir is actually functioning. It is. Now, the next thing is to look at the sulfuric acid bottle. Now, if you look at this particular scope, this is a pump which will pump the appropriate amount of liquid into, uh, from the bottle into the calorimeter. At the moment, it's set to dispense 20 mils. We want 10. So to adjust that, Andrew unscrews the black line, moves it up so that it's, the pointer is at 10 mils. Now, the actual dispenser is a pump. You pull the large cylinder up, and then when you are ready to dispense, don't do it yet, you push that down and it will dispense liquid out of this nozzle in through the funnel and into the calorimeter. So at this point, the computer person, that would be me, pushes green to go. And we wait until we've got 10 seconds of data. Three, two, one, pump. And I'm noticing the temperature going up quite considerably. And we'll just let this go until the temperature starts to stabilize. It doesn't look like much because it's trying to go up to 1,000 at this point. But the temperature is scrolling across at about 58.5 degrees. 
and it's been that way for a while. So at this point, I will stop the run. That's with the red button stopping. And auto scale here. And that's a rather more appropriate temperature. We've got the initial temperature. And notice that it takes a while for the temperature, for the, all of the energy to get pumped out. But we do have a high temperature up here. And you extrapolate this temperature across, and you get the delta T for the amount of temperature of energy that has been dumped out. You will be doing this a number of times with different volumes of sulfuric acid and water, always totaling 75 mils of liquid. Now that we've done this, we need to dispose of the sulfuric acid mixture. And so we need to talk about waste disposal now. This sink, this is a weir, and actually fits in the drain like that. Turn the cold water on. Um, I am famous for actually turning this tap, which is hot water, which isn't very helpful. And have the water running. Have this water running during the experiment itself. And you will end up with about 20 liters of water sitting here in the sink. And that gives you a reasonable heat sink as well for neutralization, as well as it will dilute the waste product before it goes over the edge and down into the plumbing. However, we can't just dump it in here. We do need to neutralize the sulfuric acid, and we'll do that now. Underneath the sink, while we're waiting for that to fill up, you'll find some of this. This is actually sold as a pH neutralizer for your, t for your swimming pool. It's sodium carbonate. It's the cheapest kind of sodium carbonate that we could get. You need to take about 50 mils of this, and you just measure it dry. It doesn't need to be accurate, but at least 50 mils of this in a dry beaker. And you can pour it out like this. Come on. First thing we do is take this and pour the dry car sodium carbonate into a large beaker. Then remove the thermocouple and pick up the entire calorimeter assembly and take the lid off. And it, it's not screwed. It's just a friction fit. And then pour the whole thing into the beaker. And there'll be lots of fizzing like that. Just pour everything in. It's OK. Now, when the fizzing dies down, what we're doing here is neutralizing the sulfuric acid with, with carbonate and turning it and releasing uh, that as carbonic acid or CO2. Once the, fume, the fizzing dies down, that's pretty close to it now, bring the beaker with the fizzy stuff over here to the sink. And just pour it, not down the hole, but into the large volume of water that's there. The stir bar will fall out. That's where you want it to be. So flush that out. Just splash it inside. So wash that out, and then dump it out some more. And also take the calorimeter and the lid and wash them in this beaker here, in this sink here, excuse me. Just dump them underneath. And then once we've got rid of most of the sulfuric acid, you take these containers, rinse them off with distilled water, and dry them, and reassemble the apparatus, and you're ready for the next run. Once you have neutralized your last uh, experimental run, and there'll be seven or eight of them, the last thing you need to do is make sure that the fume hood apparatus is also clean. So this part, the calorimeter, needs to be rinsed off with water. Make sure there are no puddles left in the fume hood. Use uh, wet paper towels. Wash everything up. Wash the paper towels to make sure that any sulfuric acid goes down the sink. Squeeze them off. They go in the garbage. And that is how you measure the enthalpy of mixing, or measure the amount of heat released, when you mix sulfuric acid and water.